It's All the right. top one. You ready? Here Thank we go. you, Sister Fire. God bless you. Virgil came to the scene of this, and I thought, well, I must have chosen the right one. I can't tell you a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I, I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that's sinful and make it light wider than snow. But I, I know a man who can. surgery on both eyes and beginning to see a little more clearly. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, it's, been a, it's been something, I'm telling you. But be that as it may, we're here tonight, able to stand up and give praise to God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Hallelujah. And we just a couple of weeks ago were able to uh, Brother Bill Webb and I uh, to minister and fill in for Brother uh, Bob McFarland at Evangel Church. He was going on vacation, so uh, we each took a Sunday and filled in over there and had a great time. And uh, Brother Bill Webb is a great preacher of the gospel and has been doing it for many, many years. Uh, Many years a successful pastor and evangelist in the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, pastor of one of the mother churches in Cleveland, Tennessee. 
uh, was the youth evangelist in the state of Florida uh, for the Church of God. And he and Sister Faye uh, have a son and a daughter. And the daughter, Raylette, is here tonight. And uh, we love her. She's a sweetheart. And uh, we love Sister Faye. She's a sweetheart. We had great times together. Brother Bill and Sister Faye pastor in an adjoining town with uh, Linda and I. We, we pastored in Southern California. We, uh, we pastored in Cathedral City, which is uh, next door to Palm Springs. And they pastored just up the hill in Yucca Valley. And we got to be uh, better, closer friends at that time with them. Uh, that's been a number of years ago now already. And, uh, but he's pastored many churches for many years in the Assemblies of God and had good success uh, through the years. And we just love them dearly. We have great fellowship with them. Uh, and so uh, there's much, much more that we could say. But without further ado, I know he is dying to get up here. He's been sitting over there like a, a worm in hot ashes for the last half hour. And I'm not going to torture him anymore. So, Brother Bill, come on up here. God bless you. So good to have you. Bless you, too. Switch microphones. I don't know how long he's going to preach. Sick. I said I didn't need an intro. Most of you know who we are. It's such a joy always to be sitting here. And, uh, I was just amazed at your pastor. It's just a, a dynamite. I tell you. Uh, it's just something Amen. My, wife, my wife loves her. Better uh, wait. Stay up with my wife. I can't stay up with either one of them. <laughs> but uh, she's doing a great work, and I really really have grown to appreciate and value your contribution to the kingdom work of God. Yes. Um, you've been so faithful down through the years. And uh, I was listening to your testimony a little bit about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That was about a year before I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was 19, March of 26, 1959. And uh, that was about 10 years after I got saved. You know, it's interesting, Pastor Jim. I, uh, I had somebody tell me how to get saved. I had a, my Sunday school teacher who was in, in church on a Sunday night. Anymore, they don't have Sunday night services, let alone the teachers go to church on Sunday night. Uh, you, you, it's like pulling my teeth to get anybody out. Well, thank you. Bless you, my daughter. I was wondering. I thought I should have asked. Thank you. Can I take a sip? Just a sip or two will do. Thank you. And I had I had this Sunday school teacher who was a public school teacher in Salinas sit down on the front and tell me and my brother what great sinners we are. And I was about nine years old. <laughs> We were really wicked boys. And you know what the 50s were like. This was not quite. This is about 49. And, uh, but I felt like I was the worst scoundrel in town. But he was talking to me about how our sins was the reason that Jesus hung on that cross and was beaten and bloodied and, and killed on that cross. I just, I felt just like the worst sinner in the world. I don't know what sin I had been committing. I didn't, but it's not a matter of committing sin. Mm. It's the sin that we were birthed, the very sin nature. Right. Yeah. We were born in iniquity, God's word. Yes. yes. And but He told us how we could ask Jesus into our heart and life, and He would forgive us of our sin and uh, come into our life. Thank you, Lord. My brother and I, at the same time, he's 14 months older than me. And I said yes. And he led us to the altar there. They were at a revival on a Sunday night. And he knelt between my brother and I, and I cried a, a puddle of tears. Probably a pool, cesspool full, I don't know. <laughs> Set all that sin just running out of my life, you know, flowing out. Yes, praise 
Well, when I stood, I felt, I felt just like, like I was in a dream. I felt like I was in another world. I just, I just felt so weird, just so light. I just felt so clean. I, mean, I, I just felt, and I looked for my brother. I, thought, I wanted to go home and tell my mom and dad what happened. And I couldn't see, so I thought, no. I'd look for Polly the Stolly. Polly the Stolly. Mm -hmm. The Stollies owned a cleaner, cleaning business in town, and he was a, a gambler and an alcoholic, but had a good business. And uh, she would take the cleaning fan on the weekend and empty all the stuff out of it, clothes that they delivered it during the week, and she would load it up on the weekend because she was a new convert, or the way she really put into practice her con uh, her trans transform transformation. She was saved. Her, he was not, but he let her do that. And so she took us to church to that, that night with along with others. And I was looking for Polly because I wanted to go home. And I didn't see her. I thought, well, they must have already left. We didn't live very far, but it was dark. And she had brought us. To, it was only, you know, a quarter of a mile, maybe a half mile probably, to our apartment uh, where we live and I I took off for home running down the street dark and I, I told this it, it, what I just felt like I just felt I saw the moon and it was the clearest I'd ever seen it just like it was bright just like it was a head like this and it looked so and I just I felt so light I was running and I was taking great pictures at least for a nine-year-old, I felt like I was taking ten-foot strides, and it felt like I was could jump over the moon. I just felt like I could I could leap over. I just felt so buoyant. I felt like I would just and I ran all the way home. I burst into the door and just my hair all messed up. I guess my face all messed because I've been crying and bawling and everything. And my mom and dad were sitting there next to each other, and they were backslid Baptists. And they believed that that they were. Free will Baptist. That means you have a will that you can backslide if you want to. <laughs> and, and, and so they, they sat in there, and, 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 and my mom got scared, and she said, like, "Oh, look. my dad put his arm out and grabbed her arm and said, Shh. he knew. He said he knew what what had happened. And I said, Mom and Dad, you don't want to die and go to hell, do you? They said, well, no, son. Well, I said, then you better run up there at that revival and get saved. Uh, first message I ever preached. And I had some converts. They went the next night with my uncle and aunt, and they all four got saved. And it changed our families for the last 60, 70 years. I don't know how long it's been. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Change lives. Change lives. And all, you have, all it takes is just that one testimony. You know, so many people, they don't know what that is anymore. Sharing and witnessing what God has done for them. Come and on. that's why churches are struggling sometimes because they want one person to do it all. That's why. Well, that's a preacher's business. You know, it's not. It's the body's business. Cheap and get cheap. And I hear you. You only hear what. You don't hear what the feet of God sounds like. Everybody, look. Yes. Do it right here. You're hearing the feet of God. <laughs> Right? All right. I and mean, we're his body. That's right. Yes. Christ is the head of the church. Everybody clap. <laughs> You're hearing God's hands. Yes. And God, so he, he is releasing his purpose yes. plan through yes. our lives. And we live out his will in this world to the lost and the undone and the yes. needy right. and the hurting. We're to be his hand extending, reaching out to the oppressed. Amen. Amen. Well, that's not the message, but it's a good one, isn't it? Come on. Amen. 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 No, thank you for that introduction. I appreciate that. She put you on the spot there. You really work it hard. I don't know where. <laughs> I didn't know what she was going to say. <laughs> but it was good. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't hear the bad stuff. Did you? Yet, huh? no. um, there, I don't know who the bad stuff. i got a few rebellious members in the past that money could tell you some bad stuff, what they think is bad stuff. But anyway. <laughs> My glasses aren't working like they're supposed to. Could I have those other glasses, Lynette, please? 
I got these classes, Brother Doug. I, I, I learned the first classes I got was about 1981. And I got in the pool pit the first time I got them. I found that when I turned 40, you lose your sight, you know, you have to start wearing glasses. And I went and got me some glasses because I've been just using those little cheaters. And I got up that first Sunday and opened my Bible. Hold it up here. That's reading distance, right? That's what the reading distance. When you're getting your lower your black buckles, it's designed to be right there. And the Bible I've done that. Oh no. And I went and I stumbled around and so I went back to the doctor and he told me what to do. And he made me another set of glasses and put the bifocal on the bottom one, arm's length, in a in a tri in a tri, tri you know, the three level, it takes the middle one and puts the arm distance away. And so it made it a lot easier. I found that out. Also it was good for working on a computer, arm's length. You know. Anyway. I don't know why I said that. Uh, thank you for your patience. Habakkuk. It's um, page 825. Yeah. It's about five books back from the end of, the, of Malachi, the, the Old Testament. About five. It's just a little small three-chapter book. Just about three little books back, or no, five books back from Malachi. We've got Zephaniah and Haggai, and, uh, Zechariah and Malachi. But Habakkuk. Now this is there's some stuff going on here in this little chapter. It's there's a lot here, and uh, it starts out things are in pretty bad shape. Things are in bad shape. Brother Ray, I, I really appreciate what you had to say about opening up because I watched some of those same stuff on Fox. Just made me disgusted this morning when I heard about they were they were going to clean up the uh, straighten up and not talk so bad about convicts and criminals. You're not to call them criminals anymore. That's, that's you can't do that in San Francisco. They're set, you know, and uh, they're they're um, something justice department. Something to do with, I mean, you, you just can't say they're, 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 they're convicts. You can't say they're convicts. That's what they're pressing in. My wife said something, brought up a scripture that, no scripture, no, there was a come a time when people would say that evil is good and good is evil. That's where we're at, folks. That's what we're saying in Washington, D.C. Uh, all of the the liberal extremists, progressives and all of that. What we're doing is horrible here. This is, we're, we're racist because there's not one African person or black person here tonight that say that we're racist. Well, we're not outside keeping them from coming in. We'd love to have this church filled with us. With Chinese, with Mexicans, with Asians, whoever. But they say, they would say we're racist. We then say we're racist just because we're white. That's what they're saying. I mean, you can't do anything good, let alone our president, because it's not what they call good. It's bad. Evil. Habakkuk was living in that same time. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? He says that first when he starts off. I'm going to hurry here. How long shall I cry? And you will not hear. Even cry out to you. Violence. I, I cry out, violence, violence. All this violence. And you will not say, you won't do it. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. Their strife, contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless. Justice never goes for it. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore, prefers judgment for sins. The wicked surrounds the righteous. 
And so perverse judgment comes forth because it's the wicked that's making the judgment. Doesn't that sound like today? Amen. Then the Lord says, Look around the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it were told you. Now, well, what's this wonderful work that God is going to do? Hallelujah! And then he says, Because I'm raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment, their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and more fierce than evening wolves. Their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as the eagle that hastens to eat. They all come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They scoff at kings and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold for they heap up earth and mounds and seize it. Then his might changes and he transgresses. He commits a myth. Uh, offense ascribing this power to his God. Well, no, that sounds weird. God says he's going to really change things. And then he's going to let loose the wolves of hell. Did you, 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 you follow me? Yes. He says, man, the prophet is saying, oh God, everything is bad and getting worse. God says, okay, hallelujah, be encouraged. I'm going to do something wonderful. You wouldn't believe it if I were to tell you. What is that? I'm going to take the wicked, wicked wolves of hell and I'm going to unleash them in your midst. Because Israel was actually the people of God were turning from him. They were turning toward other gods. They were disobedient, idolatrous. And God says, I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to spank them. But what about us, God? He said, it's, it's the nation of Israel. Habakkuk was the witness. He was the prophet of God. God was using it. I'm not going to work through this. I just want to look at all the woes in that second chapter. Woe. Indeed he, indeed, woe to the wicked. Indeed, because he transgresses by wine. He's a proud man. He does not stay at home because he enlarges his desire as hell. And he is like death. He can't be satisfied. And he goes on about that, the plundering and the, the, what they do. Woe to them who covet evil gain for his house. Verse 12, woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed, who establishes a city by iniquity. They're trying to build our communities and our cities and our nation with, by means and efforts that are pleasing more to the evil and Satan than it is to God. Then he told, he said, it is, it is not of the Lord of hosts. Then he goes uh, down, continuing it, uh, uh, the woes, there's several woes there about the transgressions of this people, transgressions of the people of God, the transgressions of those Israel, uh, of Israel and so forth. And then in the third chapter, Habakkuk can't take it anymore. And he writes a song. And it becomes a prayer in this third chapter. They, they, they sing it. And, and you can tell it's a song because in several places, Selah, see that, that word, that the third verse, it says Selah. Then down below the ninth, it says Selah. And then the bottom of the, at the end of the 13th verse, it's Selah. That Selah Hebrew, they use that as, as a, a, it's a musical note of, of, of rest. Like we have in our music, rest, where you hold a song, you hold the tone, rest. And so this is a song that they sing, but he prays this first 
in the second chapter, he prays a prayer. And he says, Oh Lord, I've heard your speech and was afraid. He's afraid. He heard what God was saying all about this stuff. He, what God had done before. He talked about God speaking and saying, I've done this and done this and done this and I'm going to do even more. Blah, 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 blah. And, and, and He said, I've heard your speech and I was in awe. I, I mean, I, I was awestruck at your greatness and your power, but the horribleness of it also. The terribleness. Because when God's judgment begins to rain down, it's going to be a horrible, horrible yes. thing. Yes, amen more ter terrible than any Holocaust event or Stalin killing millions and millions of his own people. It's going to be a horrendous experience. I heard, and I was afraid. Oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of it all. In the midst of, in the midst of everything. Now, revive your work. Do, do it what we've heard. Do it, do it what we say. Listen, this is what how that verse reads from, uh, I, that was the New King James. The King James says, This prayer was sung by the prophet of Back, the second verse. O Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known in wrath, remember mercy. And then the, uh, the New Living Testament uh, says, I've heard all about you, Lord. I'm filled with awe by your amazing works in this time of our deep need. Help us again as you did in years gone by. And in your anger, remember your mercy. And then the, how about the, the same one from uh, the message, uh, the, the fair, paraphrase, the message. God, I've heard what our ancestors say about you. And I'm stopped in my tracks, down on my knees. Do among us what you did among them. Work among us as you worked among them. And as you bring judgment, as you surely must, remember mercy. And then in the uh, Amplified, uh, the, uh, the Americans uh, version, O oh, Jehovah, I've heard the report of thee, and am afraid. O oh, Jehovah, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known in wrath, remember mercy. I've got just a little bit more here. And then in God's work, which is uh, translation. Lord, I've heard the report about you. Lord, I fear your work. In the course of the years, renew it. In the course of the years, reveal it. In all this chaos, remember to be merciful. And then the Holman's Christian service. Lord, I've heard the report about you. Lord, I stand in awe of your deeds. Revive your work in these years. Make it known in these years. In your wrath, remember mercy. I, 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 I just I did all those tracks to say that I'm not imposing anything upon this Scripture that is not there. He's pointing out all the horribleness of that society. How corrupt it was. How filthy it was. How perverted it was. And the prophet is saying, God, don't you care? God, are you, are you awake? God, are you looking the other way? God, are you asleep? God, are you on a vacation? God, are you just indifferent? God, do you, do you not know what we're dealing with down here? If we only knew. You, you read about all that billionaire. What was his name? He committed suicide in, in the New York City jail. At, at Epstein? Epstein. Epstein. Something like that. A filthy, perverted man. I mean, trans, trans, uh, transferring underage girls out of the country for their him and his friends' pleasures. Taking them to private islands and and, and all of the names as being linked to his. Bill Gates was on his that plane. Why? Who knows? Clinton was on that. Bill Clinton. Why? Who knows? Why were they hobnobbing with this guy? He was a billionaire. He had money to burn. He could do what he wanted to and he could play God. And he destroyed so many young girls. They had proven that fact. And he was in jail for these charges.
people that are held up as being great people. Corrupt. Rotten to the core. And that's what we see idolized on TV. And yes. Yes. And we say, oh God. Oh God. Oh God, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? God, why don't you do something? Maybe God is saying, why don't you? What can we do? We can pray. If we can't do anything else, and I say that like that's of the last source, but really that should be the first thing. That should be the trigger. Prayer. And that's what we're talking about tonight, learning from the prophet's prayer. Habakkuk. Prayer is, 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 is motivated by his knowledge of God's past works, past fame. I have heard of your fame, he said. I've heard of you. I've heard what you said. And it just, we read in the second chapter that it wasn't divided in chapter, chapters originally. You know, it was just one, one whole parchment. You know. He said, I've heard, I, 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 I know, you've spoken to us already about it. And, and if you read the previous, you can see where it, it, there, there's little spurts of statements about how great he is and what great works he's done and what great works, greater works he's able to do. He said, I've heard, I've heard it, I've heard it, God. I've heard it. And he's motivated by his knowledge of God's past faith and his reverence for God's past works, what you've done. Is wonderful. What you've done is great. What you've done is glorious. I stand in awe about it. I stand with my mouth open and say, oh man, what a mighty God. What a powerful God. But all the while, he has his eye on the present situation. Yes. This is now. This is now. What do we do now? Lord, do it again. He looks backward in reverence and he looks forward in faith. Habakkuk looks back on what God has done in history and he says, Lord, do it again. These things have I merely heard about with my ears. Let me see them with my eyes. These things I've only read about in books. Let me experience them in my own life. Your great acts of yesterday. Do them again today. Hallelujah. Psalm 148 and 143 and 5. The psalmist had that same kind of uh, 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 motivation there. He says, I remember. He said, I remember the days of old. As he's getting a little older here. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hand. I said, I, I, yeah, yeah, God. I, I remember, I remember when, me, me, I remember when I stood on that hillside looking across the other hillside at that big boy called Goliath. And nobody thought I could do anything with him. And everybody laughed at me. Oh, boy, wasn't that a fun day, he said. Wasn't it? I mean, I, that's so fun. I laughed so hard when I got home after what happened. I just was tickled to pieces, he said. Oh, when, that, when I went down and all I had was this little sling and a little rock, but I had a big God with me. Oh, yes. I, yeah. I, he was there, and he directed that yes. rock, and it went to the... the, the Bullseye, and that big giant came down, and I took his sword. Yeah. I took his sword. In fact, I chopped off his head. Yeah. <laughs> That's the demise of the enemy, folks. In a miraculous, supernatural way. When it looks like we're outnumbered and outgunned, we're not. Amen. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it rain down, Lord. Isaiah 63 and 11, it says, Then He remembered the days of old. Moses and His people sang, 
Where is he who brought up them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within us? Well, maybe he was silent, but he was still there. He's always there. You, you, you talk about. Did you feel something when you came in? And I, and in my spirit, I said yes, because I brought him. That's right. Glory, glory. Where we are, he is. If we have walking in faith. That's what that's what the the, the Habakkuk said in the previous chapter. That the, the just shall live by faith. Don't worry. Don't worry about there's all this stuff is happening. It's bad and getting worse. But don't stay up all night worrying about it. You know, God don't need sleep, you do. So while you sleep, he's doing. Amen. Present help in time of need. Always there. Always there. And he's always loaded with bear. What would it be like for us to pray like a back at Grace in that second verse? How can this prayer be a model for our prayers today? And just a couple of thoughts. Our, our prayers can be enriched by the reading of history. That's what enriched Habakkuk's prayer. He remembered what God had said and what God has done in the past. And we can sort of draw upon that. In fact, that's what we're doing right now. We're drawing upon what God has said and what God has done in the past. And we're looking over Habakkuk's shoulder and, and, and reading and seeing what he himself had read and received and stirred his spirit. Amen. It's like looking at, at, at church history. And that's always great to read. Uh, to reading about God's uh, the thing that we uh, that we hear uh, a lot about is the great I, I read it a lot in church history and so forth in, in, in college and grad school about uh, the great awakenings and some people said the great awakening but there's been no figured out about four great awakenings in our history our 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 uh, country's history. And the one where they usually start with happened to be just about the time of the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War. And a great move of God, a great move of God in the New England, well, it had to be in the New England states, that's only where we had states just about then, the 13 colonies, you know, and they were colonies. But there was a tremendous move of God. I mean, it was a that, that moved, the, that's one of the triggering things that, that, that influenced the Constitution and so forth. Because they, they, they talk about freedom of religion and so forth and things like that. It's because they had experienced a real wave of revival and they had thrown off the liturgy and, and the pomp of, 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 of the Catholic influence, the, 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 the real the, the, the monotone, the drudgery, and, and, and that, that sweeping revival, people became more free in their praying. They, they, they used to didn't have public prayers and people standing up and praying and, and people, you know, clapping their hands. None of that was there for each other. Everybody said like they were in a Muslim or a cemetery, and, and that's probably where they belonged because most of them were dead. Uh, but you understand that, that influence of that revival changed things. It, people became more outspoken about their faith, became more outspoken about their belief in God, and they celebrated it more, and they, and they rejoiced in it more. And, they, and that, that influenced the, the, the framers of the Constitution and, and uh, all the other legal documents that we have on record and with God and the emphasis and Jesus and the emphasis and everything like that. It, it, it transformed our society. More than one time, there was one around the turn of the century, not just simply the, the, uh, the Azusa Pentecostal outpouring, but there was a spiritual explosion about the same time that, that influenced. I mean, in New York, they would have 
it got so powerful that it, instead of the business people going out for their lunch and maybe a cocktail or two, they would go to a little, they, they, they started up, I have prayer in one of the hotels there, and, and they, they used one of the ball, it got so big they used the largest ballroom, and, and all the bars and everything in the whole the downtown area just almost went out of business because people were getting saved, and, and, and they were praying and, and staying over even over the lunch hour, and being overwhelmed by the Spirit, and, and there was a tremendous renewal at that time that just swept and that was a, uh, and then earlier there was one in the 1850s and uh, Dale Moody was one of the converts and one of, one of the awakenings and his, I mean, I'd like to share a lot of that stuff. That's going to take time. But I'm saying we can read about those things. You can look them up. Look them up on your Google or whatever, uh, you know, and, uh, you, or, or go to the library or just call it up and say Great Awakenings. Just, just look on Google and just Great Awakenings, and you, you, it'll take you to a, a, a website free of charge. It'll tell you all about them and everything like that. And, and you can read those, and it does something to you. You know, it does something. I, I, I was just by you sharing what about your baptism of the Holy Spirit. I, that blessed me. That encouraged my heart. It stirred up my memory. It, and that's why that's good it, those we read about other people we hear their testimonies we we read their messages we he, hear their messages we talk to our friends we talk to our others and find out what god has done in their life and what they say can trigger something within us and yes. a, spark, a spark begins to go forth that's just saying the way things begin to happen it doesn't start as a wildfire or a great conflagration it starts with one person being touched one person being blessed and and then the touching and blessing somebody else and it's springing forth and great works have started in groups much smaller than this yeah. Yeah. because God is honored and he is he is revered and he is glorified he loves he loves to be bright God he loves to be magnified he loves to be glorified it excites him into doing good works on behalf of his people when he knows that he is being honored for that work and glory and this is what saw the, the he is saying habakkuk is saying here he, he is learning what god has done in the past and what can be a, a powerful encouragement and a helpful paradigm to teach us how to pray. For example, learning about those incredible things of God. You know, secularization and moral decline are not inevitable. Amen. In some circles they're going to be, but it is not an, uh, overwhelming inevitable. We can change the course of history. Yes. Yes. We can change the tempo. We can change it if we would just simply begin to believe in the God that we say we know and we say that we serve. Amen. When we really begin to grasp the truth of who He is and what He is all about in dealing with His people and loving to show Himself great on behalf of them whose hearts are mature before Him. God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God loves everyone here. He loves this world. I thought that, that song, what was that song that you were talking about that you, that you remembered when you sung it tonight? That was that song. It, 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 it reminded you of that night. Oh, love it. Yeah. Did you ever tack on that end of it? John 3.16 John 3.16 When nothing else could help John 3.16 John 3.16 John 3.16 When nothing else could help John 316 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that who would believe the one in Him would not perish but have have everlasting life. Amen, 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 amen. I mean, and it's already begun. This everlasting life is not something that we get. We've got it right now. In our heart, in our life, in Christ. Just don't turn away from it. Amen? Look at John James. I'm running out of time here. And... Uh, Turn to James. Got to, got to preach the New Testament a little bit here tonight. You'll think of 
And you've got people who don't think you should ever preach Old Testament. You've got some people who don't think you should ever preach New Testament. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a five sixteen. Well, look at that fifteen. You can't. I have a bad trouble. I start reading one verse. I say, "No, you got to read the one before." <laughs> Context, context. Don't you got to have context, context, context. Without context, it's only pretext. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Now that means make whole. It doesn't mean save your soul. It's uh, it make whole. You you read about that, and that's if you broke it down in the Greek, it, it, it save. It means it, it will make them whole. You pray the prayer of faith. When you pray, now that prayer of faith is not a magical prayer. It just simply means a, a dialogue with God. It just means asking God for something. It just means that. And, and faith, it just simply means depending, depending on, to be dependent on. Are we dependent on God? Sometimes we're praying for, uh, well, let's not go there. there are, and if, let's see, the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Okay? I mean, that's talking about, of course, if he's realizing and feeling the power of God, he's going to be ready to say, yeah, forgive me of my sins. You look at Jesus when he told this, go thy way and sin no more, lest the worst things come, worst thing come upon you. Anyway, we don't have time to do that. But confess your sins, your trespasses. It's a nice way of saying it, but it's what, sins and offenses to one another. And pray for one another that you may be Healed. Now, the effective, passionate prayer, passionate prayer, now it's uh, fervent is here, but it, it's, it's talking about a passionate prayer. Passion, it's not just simply now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord, my soul for me. God, what is that other prayer of the food? God, uh, the kids learn. Listen. Uh, anyway, it's not. It's not a gentle little. This is passionate. It's getting serious. It's when you don't have anything to hang on, not even a nail. So, Lord, you don't save me. I'm lost. Lord, if you if if you don't do it, it, it won't be done. I have no other help. I have no other source. Passionate prayer. Passionate prayer. That's that's God. God. That's what God responds. To. That's what releases something. It's like something. It just releases. When it's when I received the baptism, it's just the same thing. When I made my decision, standing on that side, that that playing my guitar, and and I started praising, blessing God, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And I'd never got this far before. I I, I was so self shy, I couldn't even testify in front of people. I couldn't even say, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm on the head of praise God. Praise God. I got lined up in my IT. I couldn't see what I was saying. And I, it just confused me. And, and I was but I, I just got caught up in that song, playing my guitar, and stood up. And I just began to feel it. And then I said, if God wants to bless me tonight, I'm going to let him. I can, that was my last rational thought. And I, and I and my pastor came, and he took my guitar from around my neck. And that's all. I was out loud. I, I didn't wake up. I, when I come to my what was going on, I was standing behind the pulpit, right? Like this. And I was preaching, praying to the people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I was trying to tell them how God, great God was, how wonderful He was, how powerful He was. And it suddenly dawned on me, I, they can't understand what I'm saying. I don't even understand what I'm saying. I was, I, I was preaching to them in tongues. And you know, you've been there. And I, I went on and finally asked, back up because I thought, well, this, I don't want to disturb the service. I'm not realizing I was just a teenager. And, 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 and so I went to the little side room. And just me and God, and for three and a half hours, I couldn't say a word of English. Just, just blah, 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 you know. Uh, just, just, I just, I was just overwhelmed by how big God was. I, I, I never told anybody that I, I wanted to be a preacher or I was going to be a preacher, but my mama did. She knew. She knew. I said, no, mom, I, I can't, I can't even testify. I was real shy, self-conscious. I never gave a book report in my life or a book report. I'd taken that before I would do it because I couldn't stand up in front of it the same way. Amen. And it just, no, 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 no. You know, but that boy, that night, 
I was, I was carried out beyond myself. And the majesty of God was so intense and so powerful that I thought, God, it's a laughing. Thank God. If you want me to be a preacher, I can be a preacher because, God, if you're the one saying it, you're big enough to do it. And I was thoroughly convinced. And that was it. Boy, three, two months later, I preached my first revival. And, and listen, God, when you get passionate about God, when you get desperate about God, when you really feel realize that this is real, man, this is real, this is not playtime, this is real heart business. I mean, it is the work of God, the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. So we need to, 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 to well, I was... Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours, it says. He was a he was a nat, just a human blood person. And he prayed. How did he pray? No, maybe. No, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. I mean, he didn't just go like, God, would you please turn off the spigots for a while? No, he man, he he said, This is what God, this is what I believe that it needs to be done. So declaring your greatness and your power over that adulterous king we've got and his ungodly perverted wife, Jezebel. God, let the water stop. Let them know that God is God. I mean, he he was he said, This is a man of like passion as we, and he prayed that they would not rain, and it did not rain for three and a half years. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. Praise God. Yeah. You know, I noticed something here. Brethren, and this is sister and also, yeah. if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, yeah. so if one of you starts wandering from the truth, and one of you, other you, of you intercedes on behalf of that person, and he gets in front of them and said, but let's talk about this a while. Let's talk about this a while. You're, you're moving away from some. I mean, it, it, you, you understand. And and they say, okay, I, I, I want to I want to renew my vows before the Lord. Let him know. Let him know who the one that turns the one around. That he turns a sinner, a sinner from the error of his way, he does that, will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Now this is the way I read, the first time I can remember it is, I said, how can any person say, once saved, always saved? Once you get saved, you're always going to you're always a Christian. You're going to go to heaven. You may not get your reward, but you're saved. That's what some of the Baptist folks say. Strong. Now, how can they read the, the, just read that? Just read that. That sinner, that, that, that out, of the, out, of the, out of the body of congregation, one person will say, I, I, I'm just discouraged. I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm not going to serve God anymore. And I'm out there. And then one of the saints goes out there and puts an arm lock on him. And says, man, you're not going to do this. You've got to, and compels him back to the altar. If you're saving that man from a sinner's death. If he decides to walk out, he's not part of the saints. He's not part of the saved congregation. He's part of the backslidden sinners. And the only one place sinners going to go, that's to hell. Amen. That's right. I read that. I said, oh God. You know, how many of us need to get in the way of somebody? We talked about, man, we've got a harvest, don't we? Fields are white and already in the harvest. I mean, we've got a harvest out there. The church has got a harvest field out there. The saints, you've got somebody out there being lost right now going to be lost tomorrow unless somebody stands in their way. There are people turning away from God in the church. How many people do you know that, that, that don't even go to church anymore? And you once more went to church with them and worship God with them. And they backslide and turn away from God. Would you stand with us please? Please? And I'd like to ask you to do something for me.
and with me, if, 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 if you would, for just a moment, everyone that As God answered their prayers and worked in their situations of those that we've talked about in the past, we're invited to pray for God to do such great things again. I want things to happen again, don't you? I mean, you know, a reading about it is good for what, it, for what it's supposed to do. Hearing about is good for what it's supposed to do. But there comes a time when you want to see it with your eyes. As we look back on the great things that God has done in the past, we're invited to pray for God to do such great things again. Would you join us standing here as close as you can get here? I'm not going to hold you long. This is just, just for a closing prayer. Just for a closing prayer. Just come in, in, in the middle here. Let's just close our eyes a moment. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And I would like to ask you to pray with me. I'll, I'll give you the words, but because these words come from God's Word, they're not really my words. Do you understand? And out of the deep of your heart, sincerity of your soul, would you say, Lord, Lord, I've heard about when you poured out your Spirit on the church and gave true spiritual power. Do it again today. Lord, I've heard about when you brought about mass repentance and turned an incarnation around. Do it again in our nation today. Lord, I've heard about when you gave your church bold witness and caused the gospel to penetrate vast new areas
Sister uh, Nicole, uh, she's in a lot of pain. She said, I've either got the flu or a virus. And she said, I'm in terrible pain, my entire body. And also Sister Marvell. But our God answers prayer. We've seen so many prayers answered. So let's take these needs just as you think of them and as you, Holy Spirit leads you, pray for them right now. God, we thank you that we can bind together in the name of Jesus. Bringing our needs of our people of our body, God, unto you in prayer. We let Sister Shirley, God, let this thing that they did to her today, this procedure, God, let it do the work that it's supposed to do to heal that foot, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I lift up Nicole. God, she's struggling in her physical body tonight, God. And she has a lot of physical needs in her body already. But we plead the blood of Jesus over her right now. Course through her spirit of the living God. Healing power of Jesus right now. Let her feel in her body as we lift her to you right now, Jesus. That you will heal her body. Take out the pain. Destroy the infection that's in her body right now in Jesus' name. Pray for Sister Marvell. God, that you'll just bring healing to this procedure that was done, Father, today, and just bring it forth with a tremendous victory. Pray for Brother McGarry again, God. Oh, he needs you, Lord. He needs another miracle. He needs another miracle, Jesus. And you do miracles. <laughs> You're a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. Jesus name everybody that's here tonight God if there's a pain anywhere in their body touch it right now Jesus and heal them right now Jesus name raise them up raise them up in Jesus name oh how I love you Jesus oh let's see oh how I love Jesus. Do you love him tonight? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Virgil, did you ever get the car back? Huh? All right. 
I knew it. I knew God was going to take care of me. Hallelujah. You didn't get that back? But you know what? I felt impressed, not just because of that, but there may be financial struggles in this house tonight. How many believe that God cares about our finances? Yes. If you've got a shortage tonight, let's believe God to just make it up. Father, right now, we come together in the mighty name of Jesus over the finances of this congregation. Every individual, God, in this house tonight, that if there's a need, God, you have a way of meeting that need. And in Jesus' name, God, bring it forth, I pray. From this night, God, I want to hear reports. God did it again. God did it again. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Be that name. Be it. The name of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Give a shout. So thrilled with Jesus, he every day. Love is of God and God is love. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 